Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Gulf Stream today. Ron Nicoletti along with Brian and Nano. Samantha's on a, a little bit of a break. She'll be back with us next Thursday, I believe. So everything is good here, or as we say, copacetic. We got a fast main track, firm turf course, all weathered to Peter, and you can just see the blue skies ahead. It's been uh, basically the same thing every day. A little hotter today, and I don't think it'll affect any of the racing. And uh, pretty exciting day yesterday yeah. with the Rainbow Six. You know, we had a single there in the last. Single. They had, they had somebody was alive for a big bucks. Didn't play out. What is it today, I believe? Three and a quarter. And you hear us talk about this a lot now, even though we're starting to get up there into the, the big balloons kind of. Uh, territory at three and a quarter it, it's still out there with a price or two and it played out yesterday yeah in the last race the three was a big long shot I get that but somebody was alive to uh, I believe it was 280 grand or something yeah. like that Volkert I think the get me out a little bit of a hole so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. as they'd say Brian be, be even for the afternoon so <laughs> As I mentioned, fast main track. Lots of ways to make some great money this afternoon. It's been uh, a lot of fun. The races all week since uh, Thursday yeah. here. And now we got Brian's early pick five we'll take a look at. And uh, I'm sure it's a good ticket. 48 is what it is for me here. A couple deep in the opener. Race number two, we go four deep. I've got the eight on top in that spot. And that is Please Baby. Three deep in race three. That's my long shot in there. Tapparino, and if you're uh, not in the loop, uh, my partner next door to me, Ronnie, is two for two on the long shot this week, and uh, they have been proper long shots as well. You got Javier Negrete home yesterday. Yeah. I tried to do the same. Deflection, <laughs> and then in race five, the top pick is the one, or excuse me, the eight in there, and that is Magra, second off for Brendan Walsh. I think you have Brendan's other horse in that race. Yeah, that's my uh, single and best bet today, uh, the first-time starter in there. And uh, I have a little stat that might uh, not you might not uh, care for. Uh, you had a stat yesterday that I <laughs> sort of a beat out to yesterday. So we'll see how it plays out here. Already he's picking on me. We didn't even get to the first race analysis. Already he's taking a couple of shots at me. I'm used to it. Uh, but I knew that you have the five and the nine in the spot on your ticket. And that's where I went five and nine. Uh, let's start it with your top pick in here. And that is the number nine horse here. Flatter me. Who's getting its claiming tag sliced in half. Yeah, this is a massive drop for this horse. Those are pretty good groups that he's coming out of. And as Ronnie said, that the claiming price has dropped in half half uh, has been facing better has been running you know figures that are going to play with this group as is so I just kind of feel like uh, it's go time today for flatter me uh, you know, I have the number five Mannix on top of my ticket, and I know you had a little joke with me. I'm a big Mannix fan. I watch it almost every night, the, the Mannix series from the 60s, and uh, Brian took a little bit of shot at me <laughs> in, in these analysis. Hey, it's Marty Drexel. I just thought this horse taking money. If you look at the small trouble line, he bobbled at the break. He flattened out a little bit. Let's see if he runs a little better this afternoon at the mile in the 16 when he gets back to the Tapita. Yeah, if the Mannix in his prime would, would win this race easily. The problem is the Mannix we've seen of late has been running like he's been yeah. in the 60s. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what we're going to get today. But it's Marty. We're back on the Tapita, and I think he's a, hu he's a huge player in here. Yeah, and Jose Morelos with the one that you have in third, I have in fourth. Brad Liz Dobles, uh, one-run type. We just saw Jose coming in, so right. you know that could be a good sign. Yeah, well, let's go to race number two because this can be a really good sign. And this one is because it's on the turf. It's a mile. It's claim is three-year-olds and upward. We have no scratches in this race. I'll show you my – do I – no, it's your early pick for I ticket. got the early pick I got pick so many tickets I'm doing, filling in for Samantha. I'm a little confused. <laughs> it is ticket central here. Early pick four is $24. It's kind of a run back. You can see the single in race four, and that is mayhem in the palace. That is my best bet of the day, and then everything else kind of just – falls in accordingly and like ron yesterday if mayhem in the palace doesn't win today and with when ron <laughs> had his best bet kind of sig you know it segued every ticket that's kind of what's going on here for me today with mayhem yeah in the didn't, palace. Work, didn't work out too well no. for me guys that second place finish uh, uh let's start it off who do you have oh we're gonna stand on the seven is that where you started no the seven's further down well, i've got the eight please baby on oh, top okay. eddie owens jr <laughs> Um, I, you know, we're going to face winners, and, and, and I get that the win last time was on the Tapita. This horse has got some pretty good turf form. This is another one of those races, Ron. Another one of those turf races. We ran one yesterday where 
the majority of the field, the turf form is a very iffy. So I'm going to go back to a horse that has it in the past. Yeah, he's run well, you know, at the proper level. I did go with the inside horse, Uncaptured Boy, and this one is turning back. And, you know, over the last couple of days, you mentioned my long shot's doing well. I've been able to do it with speed on the grass, yeah. and that's what I'm seeing with this horse. And I thought this horse, cutting back to the mile, ran a little too fast last time in that middle quarter, you know, 46-2, and two, and he just didn't have anything left in the stretch. You know, I'm thinking the, the drop to the 16 level, the turn back to the mile speed. Edgar Zayas, who's good at nursing him along, yeah. on it with the pace. That was my pick, and I see you got him on your ticket, too. Yeah. And what about the number two you have on your highly rated? That's Lucky, Lucky Luke. Yeah, the other thing I want to mention, though, about the uncaptured right. boy, comes out of that gambling holiday race. Gambling holiday, I think, was 2 to 5. So that's why right. your pick was 29 to right, 1. The right. odds were so inflated in that race be with a huge favorite. Uh, lucky, Lucky Luke, Maker on the big drop. Those are st those are starter allowance at, at Tampa. We get Jaramillo aboard as well. I would hope and think that he puts a little more speed to that horse. And we both have uh, Laura Cesaris a little further yeah. down on the ticket. Now you have a stat you want to show. This is a stat horse. Let's take a look at it. Laura popped with Ronnie's long shot on Thursday, and this is a pretty good move. 26% wow. to PETA to turf. Big, gaudy ROI, and, and Laura just keeps on keeping on, and as I mentioned, on the turf with Ron's long shot the other day on Thursday. Yeah, and you don't know what you're going to get with this horse. What Last time I tried the turf was against much tougher yeah. back uh, right before Christmas time, going back to the Peter. You know, you can make a case for this horse, and when you see that stat, maybe you got to go four deep yeah. when you're putting your tickets together here. Let's uh, flip the page and go to race number three, and this one is going to be a one-mile event, and it's uh, made in optional claimers, and these are three-year-olds of Florida Breads. Oh, no, Florida Breads. Okay, you could be Florida bred. And if you're not, you run for the $50,000 tag. I know you got a replay you want to show in here of the number three. So do you want yeah. to start there? Let's start it. You've got him on top. Yeah. Now, this was a, a, an auction purchase when Bob Lothenbach passed away. All of his horses were in a dispersal sale. This horse is one to two. It is a sloppy track. I get it. This horse is one to two. He's one to 100 right here. <laughs> and he couldn't even, uh, he could, all he could do was run third. I, I just didn't like this at all. He was flat. Maybe it took a, it's going to take a start for Safi to get him in the barn, get used to him, and figure him out. That race at Fairgrounds was, was huge. The winner came right back to win. I just did not like this effort at all. He never looked a winner at any point. Um, and I'm just not coming back to this horse today at, at, a, at a very short number again. That, you know, just that was his first race yeah. ever on an off track. So maybe you yes. can forgive him for that. I certainly I thought he'd run a little bit better today. But you did go with the number five. And here, Taparino, this is your long shot, I believe, today. This is my long shot today. And, and it's, a, it's a capital L. I, I get all of it. But there's a few things that are going on here. Uh, he ran in two of the better maiden special weight races we had at the championship meet i, I should say that loosely because he didn't do a lot of running uh he was beating a football field at both starts but now jenny antonucci is going to drop him he's going to run as a first time gelding as well and i like the fact that he showed speed last time at nine furlongs he's going to cut back today jose morelos in the saddle here and he should be a good price take a shot the number two horse in here, who's the king? This one from the Safi Joseph Jr. Barn, first off the claim by Safi. We know he's 27%. He had a couple yesterday. It's probably down a little bit. That didn't run. But what I like, turf to dirt. He's good. He's 19%. This horse uh, ran a good third last time out. And, you know, Safi steps up a little bit. It reaches out for Paco. I think he's a horse you both you and I have on the ticket. The other Safi Joseph. The other Safi Joseph. The so other Safi. always like that. Ken Ramsey, uh, the owner here, too. Let's go to race number four this afternoon. And race number four, oh, wait, it comes with four or five, right? I they go it. in order. Yeah, they go in order. Is that how it works? Everything's stuck together here. We have this uh, cool temperatures here. I'll get it in a second. There you go. Got it. Sorry for the delay. <laughs> Fourth race is five and a half furlongs. These are claimers, straight $16,000 claimers, you know, for, see how they run in here. We got no scratches, jockey changes, and here's your best bet of the yep. afternoon, and that is Mayhem in the Palace. Yeah, so he ran against older horses last time. Mr. Narcissistic came mm -hmm. back to win again for Marty Drexler. Well, now Mayhem in the Palace is back with three-year-olds for Eddie Plisa Jr. Just won his 2,500th career race. The other day we'll have to work out a trip i get that there's plenty of speed to set him up and i just think he's going to be too tough in here 
Yeah, and I, I went to the horse that uh, you have in second and, and I have on top, and that's Weekend Concerto, and certainly can make for a case for him to run well. You know, it was very impressive break in his maiden. They tried the optional starter, optional claimers in his next race, going five and a half. He had a very even performance yeah. in there. So you would think second time, maybe after breaking maiden, the, 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 as we always say, the light bulb goes on right. and he runs better. And, you know, of course, you're going to have him on your ticket. I like what you said about the number one mayhem in the palace. I, I just think all these horses have a chance to run well in there. Anything else in that race? That this Not, I mean, gr group ticket is another one. Julie Stormfeld's been so hot. I don't, I, I like the running style in that I think there's going to be speed here and maybe picks up some pieces late well let's go to race number five this afternoon and race number five is five furlongs on the turf these are maiden Phillies three-year-olds and we have a, a, a nice field here and you know I, I I took a chance in this race Brian I went with my best bet of the day with the number nine I think it's El Huboob we got to check with Pete uh, you know coming in here and just you know just nicely bred you know the, by, by Brenda Waltz I know you're going to show us that in here but this is a half to Wonder Godot who won yeah. 1.5 Million, a full to hard not to love who was a good turf for five night three. Oh, we got my tropical turf and that's why I'm singling him in there. There so you go. It's a good I, one I started talking about it. Yeah, but I got him single in there. Thirty six dollar ticket. I got coverage in race nine and race eleven on the tropical turf pick three with the good fifteen percent takeout because I was able to single this horse as I mentioned, yep. really bred nicely and I was taking the shot. You know, all the starters in the race didn't impress me that much, so I jumped to uh, Brendan Walsh and now. You could show me the stat. The stat is, is not flattering. Let's show it. But the, 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 this kind of backs up maybe what I was thinking about this horse. These are first-time starters turf sprints. It's 10%. It's not like it's, it's horrible. But this is a Shadwell runner, and, and I have just kind of noticed over the years, even when Kieran McLaughlin was training, mm. Todd Pletcher as well, and even the few that I think Chad Brown have had, the Shadwell runners as a whole typically have needed a start to get going, or if two starts to get going and I just worried too this is a pedigree that wants to run a whole heck of a lot longer than five furlongs so I said you know what I'm going to put this horse a little further down uh absolute tote board kind of horse you sit yeah. up there at 11 to 1 that's no good. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, and second choice on the line behind the yeah. one, you did go with the number eight in here, Magra, the Irish bred. Uh, the other Brendan Walsh, as you say here, yeah. he had that couple of starts. He started at Ellis Park, and, and he ran an okay. That was going five and a half furlongs. He comes to Gulfstream. He's on the Tapita. Doesn't show much. No, blinkers and Lasix went on last time. He kind of flatters the stat, though, because mm -hmm. he was favored. She was, excuse right. me, on debut in a very key race, and she didn't win at Ellis. We got the tightener out of the way. Now we're back. He's a big 31% second off, so I'm going to go with this Brendan in this spot. And you got the flexion. You know, you go back two starts at, at five furlongs. You know, ran a good 50. He was 50, but it was against Beanpot, who came back and run well. Artemis Sano came back to run well, oh, to win. So he was in a good race. They tried there were two turns last time out, which they still haven't changed in the daily racing form when you're looking at it. Seven and a half furlongs, if you're just joining us, is around two turns here. Yeah. So this one going back to a sprint, you won't see that in the... In the in no, the you got to sift through the stats on that. But that turf sprint two back is clearly by far better than anything anyone's done it yeah. so far. Yeah, we're basically, you know, got our flipped yeah. around just I'm going going to take a shot with the nine. I like the breeding, as I mentioned at the top, you know, being a full to all, a half and a full to some really nice turf horses. Nice horses. Hard not to love. Uh, so we'll see how that runs. We're going to take a short break. And when we come back, I think I'll have one more ticket. I think it's the Rainbow. No, two more tickets, but I'll have the Rainbow Six first. And uh, they're off. performances with one best-in-class product you now get all three past performance formats easily switch between views access the most trusted information in horse racing with DRF all access past performances go to drf.com and use coupon code one free PP for a free single card today 
Welcome back to Ghost Name today, Ron and Brian, and race number six this afternoon. If you're just joining us, that's right. We have an 11 race card this afternoon with that fast main track, firm turf course. Mile in the 16th on the Tapita. These are claimers, fillies and mares, four-year-olds and upward. No scratches, jockey changes. And here is my rainbow six. And with my single being in race number five, didn't right. have a single today. So I had to work around it. We'll talk about this sixth race in a moment. In race number seven this afternoon, three deep for me in there my top pick being the three cartano in race number eight the top pick is the number seven horse american of course for kathleen o'connell but i used the two race number nine I went too deep in here with the four, and that is Party On Girl. We're going to show you a replay of that horse, uh, race, Chad Brown. But I also used, and I was torn. I thought I was going to put the seven on top, mm -hmm. Storm Miami. Then race number 10, my top pick is the six, Viva Con Alegra, the Chilean bread. And then the last, my long shot is the two, Bonmonte, but I backed it up with the seven Corn Peak, and I believe you're going to have a replay to show of that particular horse running in there. So lots of good ways to go. No single for me this afternoon. Very rare. And that Corn Peak is Nolan Ramsey's first mm -hmm. career right. starter. So we look forward to that a little later on, too. Yep, so let's get to this race and interested to see how you started it. Yeah, I went with the one Great Princess. What do you have? I don't have the one anywhere, R actually. Wow. Uh, current situation, uh, I'm going to just hope that he she was over her head last time back today with some friends the race two back the w two back was a good good effort i'm gonna hope she gets back to it yeah this is uh i, I went with great princess then when the first off the claim i don't understand this we, i will say it's in the amador sanchez barn we'll keep it at that <laughs> it comes off a really nice performance against three lifetime performers wins the ra race going away going to be in the inside could stalk i really you know fernando harry you look he hasn't had that many wins but he's been riding in good yeah. form he's had a, a lot of chance i like the way he rides and in, no great checks he won a tri triple crown race he was good before he disappeared for 10 years over overseas so I went with Great Princess on top of my ticket. Well, absolutely, she's a player. I just she's she's leaving the restricted ranks now, and she's facing yeah. a lot of horses that have that have not been in that level in a while. So that's why I was just a little against her. Yeah, and you know the eight in here, Sam Piper Memories, a, a little bit of uh, I think has a good shot to be on there. That's the one I was torn with. You know, gets his claim and tag uh, sliced in half from Fernando Abreu. Imaginary Stables. They won a couple of races last week. That that connection of uh, the trainer and the They're owner. So race, we'll see yeah. how they run in that particular race. So uh, the one and the eight, see how that plays out in race number six. So now we go to race number seven, and Talk I believe I have another ticket. Have another ticket. I end up another ticket. The late pick five, which, like Brian always says, sort of a copy of the last one, you know, just going down. And uh, race number seven, my top pick in there is going to be, as I mentioned before, Caritano. Some coverage in race number eight. Race number nine, uh, I like that turf race with the four and seven. Race number 10 really had me fooled, so I was go able to go four deep in there. I added an extra horse with the, you know, the, the one horse in there, Shaq Diesel, so we'll see how it runs. And then the last, my long shot, I'm, I'm playing the percentages. Hey, I'm two for two this week. Let's see if I can make it three for four. The three out of three, I mean. <laughs> three out of three. Yeah, I'm not good on the math. You do the math. <laughs> now, you could make it three out of four tomorrow, but right now we're going for three out of three. <laughs> so let's get back to this race here, the seventh race. How did you start? Hey, we agree finally in yeah. the race here with Caritano. Yeah, I just think he's the now horse and he's the right horse. We'll go off the claim for Jose D'Angelo. That's 20%. Paco is here as well, and I really liked that win last time. And we got a replay we want to show? Yeah, the gang's all here, right? Okay, so Bryce Canyon, the old dude, who was so cool. Swaggish and Coach Abernathy and uh, El Socio, too. Good job here, Bob. So Bryce Canyon, I actually looked at Ed and, and, and you guys, I think, we mm. watched this race and said, well, we're not going to see Bryce Canyon because right. he's going to run about ninth here. And watch what happens. He's the four. He's going to end up, and I don't know how, maybe he just remembered he's still a horse and he's got all that back class. He's going to win for fun, Ron. I don't know why, and I don't know how. I picked him this day. I don't know where what happened here, but all of a sudden the light bulb went back on, and he's going to gallop here uh, with a hair of trouble, too, by the way. I just, I, I don't know. I, I just, I was left a bad taste in my mouth, the way it all went down. And, and, and I, I'm trying to remember that 
that particular day. I think he ran against the bias that yeah, day that I mean, we were seeing, like the you know the torpedo races that we had a little bit of rain yeah. earlier on. I'm trying to remember the exact day, but Carrot, he ran great in there. So Bryce Canyon uh, on your ticket, on my ticket too. Today he is the number six uh, in there. Uh, I use Swaggish as you just showed Swaggish in there for Armando de la Cerda. Uh, first off, the claim by him. Boy, do you like this horse? Everybody, Everybody jumps in and claims this horse. Yeah, I had him as my long shot two starts back and he ran freakishly good he went dueling early and he bottomed out the field he's gonna go under a missile here he could get brave now what, what was your reasoning for tutti finuta him out well i didn't like the race oh that, yeah that's all i mean I, i'm okay bryce cannon won the You're race right. i that, that worried you didn't me like anybody else in you know, Jose D'Angelo is so strong, and that's Armando Del is going to have to try to improve off him. That's a little bit easier said than done. Yeah. Well, we're going to go to race number eight this afternoon, and this one is going to be seven furlongs on the fast main track. Claim is for Phillies three-year-olds and Philly mares four-year-olds and up. No scratches, jockey changes, Brian's late poor for mm. ticket is in here. Can I, I can show a ticket? Thank yeah, you. Finally. finally. All right. This is about the, the, the cap for me. I don't like to go too over $40. That's a lot in a, in a pick four. Too deep here in race number nine. Too deep as well with the four party on girl. I'll give her one last chance, and that's it for her. And then a five-by-four late double. Ronnie said it. Race 10, the feature today, is an absolute doozy. Yeah. I'm going to come back to Shaq Diesel. I'll show you why in a second. And in race number 11... Ugh, irritates me. I scratch into the seven. I don't. This is a great. We're going to talk about this race in a second. This is a great long shot race for a re, because they're going to bury the seven. Unfortunately, I had the five on top. He is. She is out. I scratch into the seven. I didn't get that scratch in the last. I must have missed it. I'm, I'm sure it's scratched. I, I made it to so. mark it down. No. So. Whatever, we'll, we'll get check it. it out. No, I think I think you're probably right. I probably just didn't put a mark through it in there. So getting back to race number eight, and this one uh, on top, American, of course, you have on top. It yeah. wasn't scratched. It was scratched. Okay, yes. I just didn't write it down. Yeah, so we're on the same horse. Right. This is a massive. Ma if it's not today for American, of course. I don't know when it's going to be because she has been facing so much better. She's been holding her own, too, and now she's drawn perfectly to the outside of the other speed. If there is any, or Amicio can just say, you know what, I'm on the best horse. Let's go about our business. Yeah, I, I, just, I agree with you wholeheartedly on, on, on the horse. They just look like the rod, logical one in there. And, you know, American, of course, but as you said, comes with a little bit of baggage, got yeah. that speed, and just somehow does not do it. So, you know, you got to look at uh, Bazinga's C on the big drop in competition you know this horse stakes race you know two back try 62 50 optional yeah. 62,500 optional claimers last time out in for the tag today for Safi Joseph I think this is they tried a couple of things didn't work let's let's see how he runs here third off the bench I, I guess she just looks way off form to right. me maybe they're gonna maybe she'll be favored I, I don't know at least if, if nothing else our top pick has been running okay and Blake uh, Kelly has the number four, Go Margie Go, who is going to try seven furlongs on the main track after showing that speed. This is going long, uh, one mile, I mean, at the Turfway Park on yeah. there, all with a tapita. Uh, she's going to be a price. I know she's a three-year-old, but the last time she ran on the main track, she won, and I just didn't want to take a, you know, a seven to five, eight to five kind of exacta, so we'll try to split it up. Well, let's go to race number nine this afternoon, and this one is an allowance optional claimer, uh, one mile on the turf, and it's for Phillies and Mares, three-year-olds and upward. Uh, we did have a couple of scratches in here of the five horse, Big Band, Louisiana, and Mama Maria, and Brian and I both have, and as he mentioned, Party on girl, the Irish Bay, and you have a replay you want to show. Yeah, last chance for her. She doesn't do herself any favors, okay? She's going to blow the start a little bit. She's going to get checked back. So we're going to show you here. And as you've seen over the past three or four days, what you've seen over the past three or four months, too, when you're back there on a firm, fast turf course here at Gulfstream Park, it's going to be a real big problem right. for you, okay? That's not going to go well. She doesn't want to be back there. She doesn't need to be back there. The winner is Rowtown, who has now won four in a row for Brian Lynch, and she's done it over everything. And so what happens here, he's got to check a little bit here again, the eight horse there. Thanks, Bob. And uh, basically, party on girl passed everyone she could. Right. She ran third. She wasn't going to get to a row town. She wasn't going to get to the steam horse, Elysian Field. But she did pass everyone else. Um, I readily admit you could make the case that she also didn't do a lot of running, just passing only hanger-ons. I'm going to give her one last chance. Ron, this, this group today 
is so much behind that group we just saw. Th that race was sort of like a Euro if you lose type yes. of thing. And to run third was very good, and you got to give one chance. But I was torn, as I said. I ended up putting this horse on top, but I was torn. I, I was going with the seven here is going to get the blinkers right. on and Lasix for Brendan Walsh. You know, first time in uh, the United States, a mile on the turf, been running on the yielding and soft courses. You don't know what you're going to get in here, but I just wasn't sold on Party On Girl totally and i kept going back to the seven here and getting the lasix and the blinkers yeah let me see how this horse runs total guess yep. right brendan yep. is four for ten with these first time in north american horses that's the good the bad is a she's a three-year-old filly tackling older horses b she's only ever run against two-year-olds because she hasn't been out since september i have no idea she's also been running at one turn over there in europe we'll see what we get today from her and beach party bingo boy this horse has speed and that's the way it's been playing around here wow. and you know I, I look back and I, I didn't use this one on my ticket and I, I might be have to go back and add that somewhere just because of the speed gonna be interesting to see we're guessing that the turf course is still gonna play the way we've seen it the last few days well here's the other thing too now the scratch of the five big band Louisiana mm. elevates this horse way up because she was the other speed in this race there is none of it anymore and you're not going to get anywhere close to eight to one on her now because she's as loose as Edgar Zayas wants her to be well we're going to flip page and go to race number 10 this afternoon and this one is real head scratcher and it's uh leg c of the coast to coast pick five which we'll be telling you about seven furlongs allowance optional claimer of course as brian mentioned the feature race is scratch the seven celestial glaze and we've got uh, a replay with yeah. the shack diesel and vivia con alegra the replay's great because it's got both our top picks yeah, okay right. shack diesel does have a there off you lose trip mm -hmm. watch it here because he wants to be very close he's the five okay and he's just going to get whacked all around at the start right there especially he's actually going to drop out of the picture here and he doesn't want to be there and you're not going to win this race from there and now we'll fast forward a little bit to the far turn this is why i'm a little against your horse today ron because viver con alegria had their Shaq Diesel now just again. Mm, right. He had a dream run down here. This was a good group. It was a stakes race. I get all that. He The C's part for him right here, and he just couldn't go through. He's right. not good enough to go through, but now he's with a much easier mm. group today, and I think that's really going to help his chances. Yeah, and ja Shaq Diesel, as you mentioned, just had that tough, tough trip, yeah. and, uh, you know, I used that one. Took, and, and as I mentioned when I was doing my tickets, this is the one where I went four deep, right. because you can make a case for Shaq Diesel. You could make a case for Viva Con Alegria on the drop, yep. certainly in there, and even on three horse in here, I thought Lord Miles had a pretty good chance. You know, this horse here, if you look at its last race, albeit it was at Charlestown, but uh, the horse that won the race come back and won sure. the great two gallon bob you know just a lot of good horses in that in that race sort of guessing hey last year this horse won the wood memorial yeah the problem with i'm against both of the safi yeah. comebackers today they're yeah. they're facing older horses the problem with lord miles is he might be down by la tub when, <laughs> when they hit the far turn he is going to be <laughs> so far behind even safi said these horses are probably going to need a race so let's get them next time yeah. lord miles has no speed at all seven furlongs on a fast main track here at gulfstream park wow he's going to have his work cut out so, yep, just a, a way, and good you know, race. Shaq Diesel, good race. I mean, there's just so many different ways you can go. We'll go to the uh, nightcap this afternoon, and that is race number 11. And as you mentioned, we have the scratches in here of both the uh, one and the number five, which I just didn't write down in my program this, ap this morning, but I have it in my PPs. And... Hey, I'll go with my long shot first, and it's Bon Marte, and I just thought this horse dropping to the 35 level, broke from a tougher post last time out, and I just thought with a better post, went a little too fast early on in that race. I just thought this horse, maybe speed pops the field. MSC Al Jaramillo did it for me yesterday with my long shot. I know you have it on the ticket, and that was my MO. Well, that's what I was trying to do in here. Lone F right on my paper. Yeah, Lone yeah. front runner because there's not a lot of other speed in here. And Amicio knows what to do with these kinds. He will go as long and as hard as he can take them. Now, your topic is corn peak. And we got yeah. the replay. We want to show with those horses in it. Yeah, I scratch into this horse, okay? This yeah. is a great race. And I said this to, to Ronnie in the office the other day. Now, here's corn, uh, Cool Tricks is a five. He's going to try to make first run. Corn Peak. He's got a little trouble down here with the Ramsey Silks. Yeah. I'm not really buying it. He ran yeah. fine. He got beaten a neck. So maybe you could argue he was best 
lost in here. He idled very, very slightly. Floribunda was game. He was good. I'm not taking anything away from him. And Corn Peak ran very well, too. Here's the thing about this race. Corn Peak, 9-5 to five on the morning line. He's more like 3-1 to one to right. me. But I make him 9-5 to five because this is the first starter ever for Nolan Ramsey. Grandfather Ken Ramsey is the owner here. Ken Ramsey likes to bet. They are going to absolutely send it in on this horse. So anybody else you like in this race, you are going to get a much, <laughs> much, much better price than you should. So I hope you like somebody else. And, and I just want to say uh, good luck to Nolan Ramsey. Absol nice one guy. Of the good one, guys. Of the, one of the good guys in racing on his own now. He's going to have some horses at absolutely. our assistant track Laurel up in Maryland. Jackson going to have some at, uh, at Pricton's time yep. at Pimlico. So going to see him around the country at the uh, first the track. So yep. that's going to be Long time assistant for Mike Maker. Oh, yeah. You know, so he, and he's, you know, great guy. One of the good of, guys. Yeah, you ask him a question, he answers is what you always love. Uh, anything else in there? But what about the 10? Cool tricks. Well, here's the interesting thing now. The 10 is cool tricks trained by Rohan Crichton. Rohan Crichton trained Corn Peak in that replay <laughs> we just had. And I'll tell you what, cool tricks is not all that far behind Corn Peak. And this is the perfect kind of horse that I've been talking about. A horse that's going to be a much better price than he should because of all the money that's going on Corn Peak today. It is not an easy card for these uh, bets. The late pick five, the rainbow six, they are very tough this afternoon. I had a tough time with this card, and that's the beauty of it. So you, if you got a good uh, thought, make sure you pound it because uh, it's a chance to make some money Absolutely. today. Uh, 11 races, and now we have the uh, world famous award-winning lightning round. And boy, <laughs> Fist has looked good once again. Well, there's just no doubt about who the horse is to beat in the Kentucky Derby, and that's the Curl and Florida Derby winner, Fierceness, who ran off the screen here on March 30th to bring the championship meet to a close. And Agate Road's a pretty darn nice right. horse in his own right. Nice turf horse for Todd Fletcher as well. And you're going to see fierceness on the inside here. Uh, it is John Velasquez, right? This is this is the penultimate <laughs> right. derby work, but this is the real one now. This is the one where the screws are tightened and watch him level off. Um, I, it's, it, it's really tough to... to bring a chink in the armor I, yeah. I i don't know because if he runs that race he's not going to lose you know you sit there, to trust yeah you sit there with uh, 20 horses and it'll it's all the draw if you get stuck on the inside yeah. at the rail you got to use all your speed to get out so there's lots of things but going in he's got to be the favorite you're a line maker guy I he's, he's got to be the favorite to me to me he's like nine to five in a 20 horse derby Phew. which is remarkable yeah then we oh sorry brian that's I was going to say, we got the old coast to coast. A very yeah. nice trip with our sister track, Santa Anita. Coming back today because SA opened uh, the other day. I also want to say, well, let's talk about this. Race 9, 10, and 11 here, out there, 4, and 6. Yeah. I love the spacing here. Right. Thank you. An hour and 13 minutes yeah, is phenomenal. That's, great. that's how we like it. I also want to give mention, though, too, they had a pick six carryover out there yesterday. So they got about $50,000 in the kitty today in their pick six. So they'll be good. Uh, healthy pools out there today. Yeah, and, that, and that's a dollar wager, I believe. It is a dollar, dollar wager. wager. Yeah, dollar yeah. wager out there in San Anita. So the, the money will be in that pool. And then we got uh, Brian's best bet today. And let's see what that is. It's in race four, right after my long shot. So we could have a little double there. <laughs> Mayhem in the palace in race four. Well, I'm right next door in race number five with my best bet. And we have to see how we we'll check with Pete how yeah. to say that. Three to one. I think that's course got a good shot. Yeah. First time starter with a lot of pedigree right. from Brendan Walsh and Shadwell. And your long shot today? Race, right. race. race uh, three against uh, the heavy favorite oh, practically dark. I'm Pat Tep Taparino. I'm in the last today with the speed with MCL Jaramillo Bom Mate, and it is six to one on the line. So that is it for us. Uh, I'm going to interrupt for a second. Oh, go you, right ahead. You won't say it, but he's going to try to win three straight long shots in a row at what ten to one, eight to one yesterday. Yeah. So yeah, they've been going good. They've no, they have not been going good. They've been going a <laughs> heck of a lot better than good. <laughs> well, we'll see how it plays out. Now that you put the hoodoo on me, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. we got about 60000 in the pick five pool. It's going to be a great day. Brian and I know we're going to have a lot of fun. I hope you guys, too, if you come out and see us, come and say hello to Brian, and we'll see you in a couple of minutes. So, hey, we'll turn it over to Pete, right? 